please, out in the wild. You are more than welcome to take any photos or it's a bird in our box. you would like. I just ask that we please do not approach the stage. If you have any questions, go ahead and hold on to them until the end. And if our feathered friends do decide to explore Two birds in a little box. bit, I just ask that we please do not reach out to touch them. Now, I did mention that they are blue and gold macaws, most notably through their predominantly blue and gold feathers. That is going to be the easiest way to tell them apart, um, but they do have some green right on top, and that is going to be a form of camouflage. So macaws are native to Central and South America, and I feel like when we think of the rainforest, we're thinking of these bright, lush forests, and Due to those bright colors, macaws blend perfectly in. Now today, what you're going to see them exploring in is enrichment. So enrichment is just something that mentally, physically, or socially stimulates our animals in hopefully new and exciting ways, or brings about natural behaviors. So obviously, they're not going to be getting boxes and hay out in the rainforest. However, they are foragers. So macaws out in the rainforest, they're going to be pitter-patting around looking for fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds. And by putting their food in the hay, in the box, I am encouraging them to practice that foraging behavior. And it's similar to if you have a dog, cat, maybe bird at home, or even a reptile friend, giving them a chew toy, a mouse toy, um, maybe a bell for your bird. That is all enrichment. We just typically don't call it that when we are home. Now these three birds, they are part of a trio. Macaws, they will have bonded pairs, but these three have decided that they are better together in a group of three, and that is perfectly okay. We have Bailey, Capri, and Azul. So if <laughs> they do come out from the other side of the box and you get a little bit better of a view of them, you might notice some differences here and there. It is pretty hard to tell our macaws apart from one another, and that's okay. It does take a while to learn that, and that's going to be important to make sure that we are knowing who we're building our bonds with and who we're training. And if anything medical were to arise, we need to be able to tell the right bird apart from the other so we can get them to our vet staff to get cared for. So if you do, hi, get a good look at them. This is going to be Mr. Bailey right here. That's going to be Azul peeking out, and then Capri's still going to town in her enrichment. So Bailey has these really big, bold stripes on his face. Now, they all have those stripes, but his are just really thick black stripes. Now, Azul on the other side, again, hi, yeah. Again, he has those black stripes, but his are a little bit more feathered out. And then for Capri on the other side, she has to have really tiny nares. Nares are going to be essentially their nostrils, and hers just kind of look a little bit tighter than the others. There we go, Mr. Bailey. I'm going to go ahead and show him the enrichment real quick. There we go. Now, just like any other behavior, enrichment does need to be trained. So, our birds aren't going to who naturally know what a box with hay is. That is something that over time we're going to have to get them comfortable with and know that there are good things inside. Just like how you have to train your dogs to veg, same thing with our animals. Over time we're going to teach them that, hey, if it looks like there's something in this box, there might be, and they're going to know that, oh, if I interact with that, there might be some good stuff in it. And again, it's just going to help mentally keep them going and learning and exercising their brain. Now, they are very smart animals as well. Now, who has a child? I see a lot of kids in here. We have a lot of parents. Are the terrible twos and threes a thing? Yeah, yeah I see some big yeses with that one. Your kids are pretty clever, you know? They're pretty sneaky at that age. They're, you know, finding ways to make you tick. They're being really, you know, again, just smart about things. And macaws, they have the intelligence of a toddler for around 60 to 70 years. Yeah, so on average, that's going to be their lifespan. However, there have been macaws that have been known to live into their early hundreds. So with that, picture us training and working with toddlers for about 60 years. It is a really big responsibility.
responsibility, but again, they are very intelligent animals, which is another reason why this enrichment is so important, but it's another reason why we always, always recommend if you're deciding to get a feathered friend to do that research, because A, that is a lifelong commitment, and B, if you thought having one or two kids was a lot, imagine having a 60-year-old toddler. Might not be the, you're like, I don't know, that sounds kind of fun. Now again, being from the rainforest, they do have their own role out there as well. They are known as oh, very strong. They are known as seed dispersers, and that essentially means that they're pretty messy eaters. So macaws, they have really strong beaks, and what they're going to do is they're going to use those beaks to crack into nuts. And what's going to happen as they're eating, they're going to be dropping a lot of that. So they're going to be dropping a lot of nuts and a lot of seeds, and that's going to give way to new plant life or animals that are on the forest floor and eat their scraps. It's creating an entire environment um, where others depend on them. So they're a very important part of that rainforest ecosystem. So we want to make sure that we're helping them out as best as we can. Now you don't have to fly all the way to South America, that is okay, because there are some pretty easy ways to help them out right here at home. And the easiest way is to just be a smart shopper. So you might not realize that things that you're getting in your everyday lives come from the rainforest, because who likes chocolate? I know I do, I see a lot of hands for that one, Halloween's right around the corner. What about coffee? Yeah, I see some of those adults that were like terrible reason for these are thing, raising their hand with that one. Um, let's see how many hands I get for toilet paper. Less than I got for chocolate. <laughs> I'm gonna stay away from that side of the theater. Might like, smell a little bit. What about shampoo and conditioner? Yeah, same thing for that one. Now, with that, all of those items have the potential to come from the rainforest. So what you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and just pay attention when you're buying things. Um, so with that, you know, there's going to be a little green tree frog on the back of those products that just symbolizes that they are rainforest alliance certified and that they did not take away from any homes that animals like to free and orders will call home. Now, they obviously said, hey, we're done with our enrichment, and that's okay. Our birds always, always, always have the choice to participate in their sessions or not. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to wrap up. If you have any questions at all, absolutely feel free to ask. We're going to see if they want to come down again, but if not, we're going to go ahead and bring them home. But thank you, everybody, so, so much. And have a fantastic rest of your day.